Hello, adventurers, and welcome back. Big thanks to our patrons, Derek Kuntz, Ryan Donnelly, Daniel Nichols, Brian Dowling, and Jolene Fresquez, along with many others in our show notes. A few episodes back, we left Sophie and Scottmere seeking out the fate of the Bloodwood Dwarves and Mount Trollguard, the home of the once great Dwarven Forge that now lies in the terrifying grasp of giants within the mountain's flame. Dawn of Dragons, Season 6, Episode 5, Soul Crystals. Look at these walls, Sophie. So smooth. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered why I liked crawling around in the mines back home with Zane and er everyone. I guess it was in my blood. Mmm. <laughs> Smell that? Yeah. Reminds me of Erebus a bit. Makes sense. He was a blacksmith, yeah? The best. That's the smell of coal dust and molten iron coming down the hall. It's great, isn't it? It is. That means this forge isn't as abandoned as we thought. But the tracks outside... The pair walked down the long, wide expanse from the front gate. Scottmere noted that this was the main artery and was as massive as the front was where they had entered ten minutes ago. The carved floor showed grit and wear, including the ruts of massive and heavy carts used for transport. The ruts themselves came to his waist and were as wide as Sophie was tall. The braziers that hung from the ceiling glowed with the mountain's natural fire, flowing in and out from a system laid in the walls themselves. Red and charcoal granite housed polished obsidian that reflected the light into the massive hall, illuminating their careful footsteps. The ceiling hung five stories high and was just as wide. Half of you is one of those tall folk, but the other half is mighty dwarf sister. <laughs> That's so great. Explains those biceps of yours. <laughs> but I still like wine way too much to switch to that ale swill you drink. Hey, well, more for me. Ah, I miss that taste. Barley. Maybe a touch of hops with a malty, frothy, delicious... Scott, come here. Shh. Follow me. They ducked into a narrow stairway cut in the side of the massive hall as the natural rumble from the great forge fires was interrupted by the approaching booming fall of heavy boots. Iron bands cut from wagon wheels covered the toes of the blackened thick leather. Each boot was on its own, as tall as Scottmere, and those that wore these were a legendary people, standing as high as five minecarts stacked on top of one another. They were unmistakably the giant folk of the mountain flame. Though either of them had never seen or met any of these people, their ruthless cunning was feared as much as their size. Two hundred tons, and yet, not a single gem. How will this be overcome, brother? It's not like we can enter the portal ourselves. Zalus and Bluegar have blazed the torchlight in the dark again. They believe the god of their mountain will destroy them. <laughs> what fools? Well, as long as they keep losing. Need more gems, though. Gems are fine, but the real power is in the steel. The more they make, the more we can trade. And the trade maggots in Darkovnia won't know any difference. <laughs> Perfect. Don't get too cocky, though. Most greedy please can be rather tricky. Come on up here. There's no way they can fit up these stairs. Good call. Let's go. Looks like this goes to some upper chamber. You never have seen them before, have you? Giants? No. I was told they were rarely seen. Many people thought they didn't exist. Like, I don't know, flying to the moon, I guess. Ha! <laughs> flying to the moon? Yeah, I hadn't ever seen them either. Just heard a lot in the legends, and then 
The one we saw back at the Skull Mountain. The Nether Spring, you mean? Yeah. Hey, there's got to be a reason they're here and the dwarves aren't. What do you know about them? All I was ever told was that they were big. Heard they were real cruel. Something about drowning people in molten lead. Oh, uh. Yeah, these ones aren't too far removed from us, though. You can see how stocky they are. Tough. But you heard them. Sounds like a lot of steel smithing going on. Hey, listen. Hmm. What? I don't hear nothing. That's just it. I don't hear any forging. I haven't since we got here. Oh, hey, keep low. Looks like it's opening up ahead. Reaching the top of the stairway, the pair realized they were on a massive stone walkway that wrapped the perimeter of the ancient and relatively inactive caldera. The walkway was built for two dwarves side by side to patrol the overlook into the central forging far below. This was likely not a comfortable fit for the heavy giants. Look, Sophie, down there, the forges have been dismantled and swept over to the, that far wall. That pile of junk was the Great Forge? What's left of it, I suppose. They seem to just be inspecting that row of carts. From where, though? Scott Mir? What's that? I... I've never seen crystals like that before. And I've seen plenty back home. Come on, we can get out of there by walking the chain. Suspended from three massive chains which spanned the room was a cluster of iron-bound crystals. Short pillars of a faceted matte gray blue stone. They crawled out onto the iron chain to get a better look. The chain was as thick as a log and the two friends carefully stepped along its length. The smell of the sulfur wasn't as strong here as the dry heat that sapped at their bodies as they went. Sophie saw no real source of it, though. Several small braziers were lit throughout, providing light but no expected lava flow. The chain swung naturally in a slow drift, ignoring their own weight six stories above the floor, one of the few things taller than the dozen giant folk walking below. Their armor was blackened and thick-plated, topped by plumes of fire-red hair and beards that poured forth like flames themselves. Stay low. Yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> nice one. Two hundred and seventy pounds. Seems a bit shy, me boss. Combine those two, and we should be ready to ship them. Yes. With the surplus rock for Axes, blades, short blades. I Not those. Go for the gauge. What gate? I see no gate. Do you? No. That arch, though. What is that? Sophie saw an archway of stone at the far end of the great room begin to glow at the sound of the deep resonating horn. The great brass horn blown by the giant known as Northos, she imagined. A relatively slender giant with a single braid of fire wagging from his chin. The room became eerily silent as the sound decayed in the ancient halls of the volcano. It's a portal. Look, there's smaller carts coming, pushed by... Wait, Scott Moore, it's the Grey Dwarves? The ones like from the Underworld, remember? The grumpy ones, red eyes, gray and white hair. It's gotta be them. But Scott Mir wasn't listening. He was at the bound set of crystals, intently looking at one in particular out of the crystals that was only slightly larger than he was tall. It wasn't until he got closer that he could see past the dark gray haze the light of the room passed through like smoky glass to reveal a woman's face. Her hair was pulled back in red braids, and her eyes were closed above her ruddy cheeks. Her brass armor had familiar angles. He couldn't mistake her now. Sophie, it's... it's Farah. Who? Farah Ironstone? The King's Marshal. Oh, but how... The shout below startled the pair as they ducked down next to the frozen body of their ally from the dark underworld. 
The giant crushed a gray dwarf under a massive boot, and Skotmir felt a rustle behind him. Sliding from the massive array, a crystal fell slowly, reflecting its light gently as it shattered on the ground in a thousand glinting shards. The small form of the same dwarf was revealed, but with blonde tresses instead of the gray and in a burgundy apron. His face was finally at peace. Scottmere looked at Sophie. They're prisoners. Worse. I don't think they know. We we gotta wake them up, or at least not leave them like this. I'd rather die than this. She would too. You know it too. Scottmere's hands were shaking while he pleaded with Sophie. Her heart broke as she imagined this horrible fate for the proud people in the dark city of the Great Forge. I have an idea. Sophie wasn't known for her wisdom. To be honest, neither was Scottmere. The two friends looked at each other, recognizing this mirrored trait, and darted back along the chain to its mooring. A lever of cold iron and pin held it to the stone wall. Let's do it. Forever the stone. I'm sorry, my friends. Ugh. Yeah! Throwing the lever swung the chain in a fast and powerful arc toward the ground. As it gained speed, it slammed into the unsuspecting body of Mibo, still gloating over his murder of the dwarven blacksmith. His giant body rolled head over heels into the carts, scattering the blades to clatter across the floor. Look out, run! More importantly, the cluster of ironbound crystals plummeted as well. Skotmir stared at the faint image of Farah's face as she swung in an arc with her imprisoned people toward the ground. The ground that was their birthright, taken from them by these giants. I will avenge you, my friend. Wait. Scottmere saw a dwarf standing below, with gray skin and shining blue eyes. He was the one at the auction, the one bidding against Zorin to free Zane. His face cracked in a smile, before the crystals smashed through him into the ground, illuminating the room in a bright light. Oh my god, it worked! Run! Yeah, let's get down there and kick some giant butt. Yeah, if you can reach it. Ha, you're on a roll, sister. The floor sprung to life from the glittering shards of the crystals, revealing the restored Bloodwood Dwarves of Mount Trollgar as they plunged into battle with their captors. Gone at mountains. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. You freed us from a terrible dream. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Ha, uh, it was really Sophie anyway. <laughs> Thank you too, Sophie. We all stood on the dais with the stone gate. The brass horn that served as its key was back in its home, mounted to the wall, and at a height more suitable for one to use it. Hundreds of proud dwarves, men, women, and children all, looked up to their liberators. Farah was free, as were her people. Her loyalty was one thing she had held onto for half a century, along with her people, under the cruel yoke of the giants. Scottmere saw her smile now, as she placed both hands on his broad shoulders. Scottmere. You have saved my people, and we have no king. You have brought us back the hammer of our ancestors, the hammer that signified the one who ruled our mountain. She leaned in, her smile broadening. I, uh... Would you? Well, I, uh... Let me finish. Cockmere, shut up! Would you be our king? No. What? I, I can't, Farah. I mean, you're their leader. You brought the hammer back. You have to be king. Uh, um, fine. Cool. So I'm king. I present King Scottmere the Bold. Okay, okay. Thank you, my friends. Or, I, I mean, great people. 
Yes, you're all great. Ah, well, it has been wonderful being your king, really. But at my first and last act, I present you Queen Farrah Ironstone, the just, the, the, the beautiful. The crowd was deathly silent. Sophie placed her head in her hands in disbelief. Oh, for the, your brother is an idiot. Wait. Wait! Wow! Go Scott! Sophie peeked her eyes between her fingers, apprehensive at what she might see. She saw Farah pulling Scottmere into a warm embrace, topped with a kiss. The crowd exploded. The pair once again found themselves on the dusty road back towards Kerr. They would travel south from there to Port Lafour and seek passage back to Whitford in the New World and finally home. They've been traveling a few days now, but that roar of the dwarves' celebration still resonated in their heads. They were now making their ascent into the mountains and leaving the cracked, chapped earth behind them. You... you could have been the king. Yeah, but I want to be a hero. Like you, my sister. Ah, shut up! <laughs> Besides, Ferris said she was heading down to the mine to liberate them from Maldros and Lord Pallas. Then she will meet me back at the Garnet Mountain to secure an alliance with my people. That will be a lot easier for my brother to understand. Knowing my luck, I'd be labeled traitor or something if I knew that they were king. I don't know if I was supposed to get back the hammer, even. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sophie. There's something about those crystals. Uh, something familiar, but I can't put my mind around it. I... Whoa! No way! Stand down, Scott here. From the new tree line that flanked the road out of Bloodwood stepped a dark mare with glowing blue-green eyes. Its flesh hung in tattered rags, drifting in the breeze. Sitting astride was a warrior, gaunt and pale, an echo of the life her body had once carried. Clutching the reins in both hands and staring intently at Sophie with glowing blue eyes, much like her own. Familiar eyes. She spoke with a voice Sophie had not heard in a very long time. Well, it's been a long time, hasn't it? My sister. Appearing in this episode, Farrah Ironstone, King's Marshal of the Bloodwood Dwarves, Nikki Richardson from the Top of the Round Podcast, Scottmere, the Dwarven Berserker, Colton Jansen, Sophie, the Swordmaster, Fox Avalon, the Spirit of Zane Shieldheart, Storm S. Cone, Cardlin, the Nightblade of the Undead Army, and Sophie's sister, Daphne Bickler. The Giants of the Mountain Flame. Mogus, Colin Holmes, Ron Thor, Frederick Verhagen from Bubble Bear Creations, Udzar, Tyler Cauldron, Mebos, and Keldor the Narrator, Mike Atchley. All music in this episode is written and performed by Mike Atchley and is available wherever you stream your music. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Dice Tower Theater's Dawn of Dragons. Please join us in thanking our magnificent cast by leaving a review on your favorite podcasting platform. In our next episode, 
we rejoin Zoran, Vash, and Vix as they seek to find allies with the Elves of Viridian. Shrouded in mystery and protected by the enchanted stream of dreams, will they be allowed to enter? How will Vix respond to being surrounded by perfect beauty? And will he continue to be as cranky as we know him for? Stay tuned for when we return next month, or jump ahead by joining our patron at any level. Until then, adventurers, stay safe and remember the oath.